Jax? Is that you? Red Williams, are you here? Oh, that is me. That is me. Yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. Oh my god, I didn't tell Vito. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm legitimately surprised. That's all right. This I'm going to beat Vito up when I see him. You know, he's talking about how bad it is. No, no, no. In a world filled with cinematic trash, it's easy to call out everything wrong with the movie. But what if we forced that lazy film criticism to stop hating on movies? What if they were forced to love them? We grabbed two of the most negative neckbearded film critics on the internet and force them to watch some of Hollywood's greatest dumpster fires. They'll go head to head, competing to see who can most convincingly defend these cinematic piles of <laughs> Each man must fight to overcome his hatred, learn to love each wretched film, and confidently <laughs> declare to the world that it is the best movie ever. Best movie ever is going to be part of my new movie channel, Movie World, where we only talk movies. So hit that subscribe button, that bell for all alerts, and then smash that like button and leave a comment down below with the movie you want to torture us with next. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Best Movie Ever. I'm so happy to be here with my man, Vito. What's up, Vito? How's it going, Andy? I'm very excited for another installment of the best movie loving show on the on the internet this is the show where we watch <laughs> movies that people call the worst movies but we find the positive veto and yes. this week in honor we of love them in honor of the new mortal Kombat coming out we had to tackle what is seemingly the worst mortal Kombat film mortal Kombat annihilation <laughs> man this are there one, only two mortal Kombat films though uh there well yeah there's animated ones there's some other like yeah. fan films and stuff but two official well, one of them's one of them's got to be the worst one at that point if yeah. there's only two <laughs> well, I got but thoughts on this. It is very this. bad. It got, is very bad. I got some thoughts on this. Yes, but we're going to keep it positive. I will before we get into our positive, I was so confused in the beginning cuz they recast so many people and then add so many people. Yeah. I was like, "Wait a second, cuz I'd rewatched the first one pretty recent uh and I I could not I had no idea what was going on. I think the only the person the who comes back <laughs> is uh Liu Kang, right? And everybody else and got Katana. Recast. Katana as well. Both you know a movie's good when all the original actors don't want to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the mark of quality we will well maybe but let's let's get into this let's get into the into the, into the positive and since uh you we did a poll last week Vito, and my last gosh. week's movie was the great battlefield earth <laughs> yes and you destroyed me one. in the poll oh my god 80 votes to 25 votes you won by 77 percent almost 77 percent because before when we did when we did uh what do you call it godzilla it was like pretty close yeah th this, this was, was a blowout close. <laughs> no I don't know. I, you know I what it was? I did you know that it poorly. Was? <laughs> it was the cow. The cow the won cow it for me. It. You're right. Everybody knew it was the I cow. Got well, Travolta, because I Travolta, but it was yeah. early. I think. I think the tip. Travolta is not worth as many power points as the cow. You're right. You got to save a good one for the end, but it's a strategy yeah. because you don't want to save the good ones for the end because you're afraid the other person's going to take them. So it's that's true. Ending strong is a good strategy. It is a whole thing here. All right. So that means because I lost, I get to choose whether I go first you get or to second. Choose first or second. All right. I'm clearly going to go first. I think that. Is, I think that's. I, I think, think that's the that right is the way, way to, to go. It. All right. Yeah. So let me. And for those of you watching at home, don't forget that if Andy brings up a point, I can't do that point. So it's all about trying to figure out which one the other guy's not going to do. Correct. All right. So I'm, so I'm hoping you're not going to lead with my strongest one here. We'll see. Well, I have the strongest one, no doubt. And I'm going to go straight with my strongest one. The strongest character in this film. There's a lot of characters in this film, and I loved it. But to me, the standout of this movie was, without a doubt, Jax, played by the amazing Red Williams. Jax was incredible. Jax had the lines. Jax had the fight. If we could get Mr. Red Williams here, I would ask him so many things because, wait a second. What? Oh, my God. Jax, is that you? Red Williams, are you here? That, that is me. That is me. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I am here. Oh, my God. I didn't tell Vito. No, I'm, uh, I'm legitimately surprised. That's all right. I'm going to beat, up when I, I'm gonna beat Vito up when I see him. You know, he's talking about how bad it is. No, no, no. Jax, come on. I'm going to crush you, Vito. Oh, no, my goodness. no. I got Who a first class part? ticket. To, look, and I'm going to take some of your toys. No, no. <laughs> They'll be crushed to bits in your mighty mechanical arms. My God. Uh, all right, all right. I mean, come on. Like, how awesome is this? We got Red Williams, Mr. Jax himself is here on the stream. Yeah, now what? 
And yeah, of course he's the best part of this movie, Vito. I mean, before I go How to you, Mr. Williams. How do I possibly win this one <laughs> when you actually went and got Jeff? I can't possibly, whatever. Yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, great. Well, who I got I bring in? Before I even get to Mr. Williams, who's here, I'm gonna, and I'm so yeah. proud he's here. I mean, come on. Talk about these fights. When Jax takes on Cyrax, he gives, yes. a, a, I guess, his... Yo, I take it this ain't something we can talk about. <laughs> boom, boom, they get right into it. And then he's taking on, after Sonya's mud fight, he's got that amazing, the state-of-the-art CGI devil creature that he pounds yeah, back into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I have no yeah. idea what's going on, but I love it. I was in it and didn't know what was going on. So. <laughs> they just say, look, we don't know what this thing's going to look like. Just, just make it look it. good. Just pound it they in the said, ground. They said, fight this big green thing. I said, okay. <laughs> well, you fought it beautifully, and you had that amazing it scene. Worked. And then you fought the, the, the centaur, Mont Motaro. Uh, yeah, yes, I'm going to make you eat that thing. Yeah, I'm going to make you eat that thing. I mean, what an iconic line. I'm going to make you eat that thing. It's kind of confusing what thing. I assume the tail, the, ta the yes, tongue. Yes. All right, but it was beautiful. And then let's not forget at the end of the movie, Vito, spoiler alert for those who haven't watched Annihilation, <laughs> dude gets his bionic arms ripped off but doesn't need them. He takes out yeah. that centaur with his bare hands. Proven he had the power all <laughs> along. Jax is the star. I was going to say Jax has probably the strongest character arc. Yeah, because at some point I forget who it is in the movie. He tells him, "You don't need those mechanical arms. That's your weakness." And he learns that he truly does not need the mechanical arm. It's true. Yes. I got everything I need right here. My favorite thing is the fact that Jax really is the audience. And I, I brought an audio clip. You guys can hear this because here are the many questions of Jax. What's going on? What you doing here? Squad. Extermination squad. Where you been anyway? <coughs> is that right? What the hell is that? Shot what? <laughs> Uh, you mean Mr. Bad Attitude back there? You want us to go check out his crib? Yo, I take it this ain't something we can talk about. What's going on here? Here's my imagination. And I'm a split, all right? What is it with you? And who the hell is John? Now what? You can't trust me, you can't trust me. Nobody but you. Which temples they are the gods? You know this dude? Can I make a suggestion here? <laughs> me? So we just gonna sit here and wait for this dude to show? Who does this dude think he is? This is not good. Maybe she didn't come in handy after all, huh? And what happened? What does that make Khan? Man, you got one dysfunctional family. You know that. Are we really ready to die here? Is that all you got? <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Finally asked for help, huh? I've known you one minute. And you dissing me already? I don't know where I am. <laughs> Love it. Oh, What's bravo. Bravo, sir. You're, so you're the you are you are the audience. Because I don't know what the hell's going on in this movie, but only Jax can ask all the questions right. to get it sorted out. So, hail, uh, Mr. And Sonya Red won't tell him at one point. I was getting upset. He's like, what are we fighting? Who are we fighting? And Sonya's like, forget about it. I'm like, Doesn't matter. just tell him. He deserves to know. I deserve to know. Yeah. Well, I don't. I mean, that there's so much more, but I, I got to get here from Mr. Williams. Uh, what do you think? Did, did you love all those questions? Did you notice all those questions? Uh, what you know, was your response? I, I, I was the... I was the designated comic relief. And so, yeah, I had to ask the questions because like you said, I was coming out of the blue, didn't know anything. And so me asking the questions would allow the audience to follow it. So yeah, I had to answer the questions. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was an amazing performance. And so I right out the gate, best movie ever. It's Mortal Kombat I is the best movie ever. Thanks to Mr. Red Williams, sir. And hallelujah. I always now, that. Vito, we have Mr. Williams here. It seems only fair that he should judge this episode, don't you think? Yeah, I think that's... <laughs> it's. I don't know if it's fair that you get to lead with him <laughs> as your point. He didn't tell me we get to bring special guests. You can do whatever you want but, uh, on the show. There's no rules. Yeah, I, I'm oh, your guest no also, now. Vito. There's I'm no your rules. guest also. All right, yeah, Red, you're going to be uh, impartial here. You can listen to the rest of our Absolutely. points. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So I say yeah. it, it's Vito's turn. We're going to do an interview One with Red. One of the Red. points is the role that he played, <laughs> and he's going to be impartial. <laughs> I'll be impartial. Oh, this guy likes Jax. Yeah, maybe I'll give it to Okay, fine. Whatever. We're going to interview we'll him see. more officially after the show for a special video. Well, Vito, you did agree that I was the best in the movie, so you get Yeah, right. I think I should get partial credit. It's not one-sided. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I feel like we should split that one, but fine. I'll let but Andy no, have it. No, I get the yeah, first no. point. Uh, all right, that's how you play this game, Vito. If you want to come to win, bring a guest. As iconic I'm going I'm to bring somebody. <laughs> I've just upped somebody. the ante. Uh, uh, all right, so Mr. Williams, this is how this goes. Red, sir, we can call you Red? 
Yes, sir. Great. Oh, uh, Red, this is how it works. We've, we've talked about this before. You came up with this best movie ever. We each get points. That's my first point. Uh, Vito's going to go next. Uh, between rounds, you can give us any commentary. You can ask questions. But at the end of this show, I expect you'll deem a winner of who really was the most positive person about Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I see Vito is already changing his answers, knowing that... <laughs> One of the cast members is here. Uh, no, 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 so, no, 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 no. I, just, <laughs> I, he, went, I was going into genuine. this like, oh, Vito just did not know fun. that Fred was going to be I didn't know here. I was going to have to fight my way upwards. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, I didn't come prepared for this at all. All right, well, Vito, the floor is yours uh, with our judge, Red, here to help. Uh, I defer it back to you. Uh, now, that was Fair my number enough. one. Vito's number one. Go ahead. All right, my number one, and uh, this is a big thing. If you're a fan of the Mortal Kombat franchise, I don't think anybody can deny that one of the best things about this movie is all of the characters, not just Jax, but I want to say pretty much everybody from the Mortal Kombat franchise ends up showing up at some point. Uh, you got Johnny Cage, who gets off in the first five minutes, whatever. Obviously, everybody's returning. Raiden, Liu Kang, Sub-Zero, which authentic to the plot of the games, it is Sub-Zero's younger brother, because the original Sub-Zero is dead. They have Scorpion, Snoke, Cyrax, uh, even characters who they can't get into the movie, they still reference them. At one point, they're like, ah, oh, we already killed Stryker and Cabal. You're like, they got everybody in this friggin' movie. And, and every time you think, okay, they're done introducing characters, they're done introducing, then all of a sudden, Baraka shows up in a rubber monster mask. You're like, they got Baraka now. <laughs> it never stops. And the characters are authentic. They look like they came straight out of the video game. Again, how can you not be excited for my main man, Jax, with his big old robot arms going to town? I mean, if you wanted to do a video game movie, one that is authentic and for the fans, I mean, this is a love letter to the video game. It gets it right. It gets as many of these fan favorite characters in there. And, and though the movie maybe at times is uneven, at least you get to see your favorite characters on the big screen. And I think that's what brought people into the theaters. And I think it's why they left with a big smile on their face. That was my num my next number. So finally, Vito, you'll yes! feel good. You finally yes! took one of mine. I think that's a good point. Snagged Although the, it. that Baraka mask looked awful. I got to say, it's the one <laughs> uh, it did not pull it up. It looked perfect. Best uh, movie ever. Shiva's. All the I love. I love. My favorite is when they introduce Shiva with her four arms, but they're like, we can't really afford to have her fight, so we're just gonna throw a cage over her immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Animating the arms. Look, they saved that money for the dragon battle, which exactly. I'm sure one of us. Jax's Jax's <laughs> yeah. dragon dog got the got the budget yeah when there. he had to fight the bone monster all the special <laughs> effects went to the they're like you can't afford arms at this point damn it all right well Vito, you got me on that one i'm gonna move unless red has anything to add i'm gonna move on to number two you got anything you want to add to that red or you want to um, say I, I i i think Vito did really well because because every character was introduced in the movie Pretty Very much. Good and, and they all looked great they looked again they didn't like change up their costume like some of these movies do you know, where you see a Power Rangers movie and you're like, this doesn't look like Power Rangers. And maybe this the looked... mask, maybe the mask looked bad because Outworld's gravitational yes. level was different than Earth. You know? oh, Outworld has yeah, all sorts of rules that I mean, we can't even he was pulling Baraka's face. I love around. this. He's justifying the worst mask in the movie. He's totally right. Uh, it's, it's if Jack says world it, world. it's canon, right? <laughs> exactly. That's the rule. Absolutely. It's canon now. Facts. Facts. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I mean, if you since you took my number one there, I mean, my next number one. All right. I'm going to go. With my, so for me, jumping into my number two, the stakes are legit in this movie. OK, the stakes are so legit that they literally man of steel Johnny Cage's neck at the start of the film. The Avengers movies don't even have that kind of stakes. This is a movie where they don't have a problem killing one of their main characters at the start of the movie. <laughs> Johnny Cage, who's iconic and himself one of the main players. They just are like, bam, 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 bam. They get rid of them. Uh, and the stakes are so good, even the gods don't care in this movie. The gods are like, yeah, I don't, I don't care that you guys won the tournament. Yeah, I don't care that he cheated. <laughs> We're just going to like, yeah, we just want to see more fights. The fate of the universe will be decided as it should be. Immortals combat. Because that's what this movie's about. I gotta say, the stakes in this movie, as silly as it seems at times, are legit. So uh, I'm going with the stakes for my number two. 
uh, uh, they, they, don't, they don't mess around in this movie, Vito, as you alluded to, but I don't want to no, ignore I that. No, I mean, when they killed Johnny Cage, I was, it was heartbreaking. I love that. Yeah, you know, and they cast like a guy who kind of looked like Johnny Cage from the first movie, but they're like, ah, 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 it's not actually him, but you did you couldn't tell, could you? You had to go back and no, check, did I, I, I wouldn't. I would have had to reference it. I don't remember who played Johnny Cage. Do you know, Red, do you know if that guy who played Johnny, I don't even remember who, because he's only, he's in briefly, but it wasn't the original Johnny Cage from the movie. Did you know anything about that drama of why, did they approach the other guy? Do you know? by chance no I, I don't have any idea but that's funny you just taught me something because i thought it was the original johnny k <laughs> it might be i don't think any of us actually no, know it's is not the problem. I, I uh, did. they they filmed that i i didn't i wasn't there and i actually thought it was the original johnny k see see even fooled even red they did Fool, such a good job fooled even, even the cast they were like it was not it. the same johnny cage because i guess he must have gotten the script well i mean uh, drawing on that i mean this idea of up in the stakes and getting the movie moving so quickly why because this movie is non-stop fighting action we have no time for plot we need more fights all the time Everybody is fighting. There's a fight between Scorpion and uh, Sub-Zero. I don't think advances the plot at all. Raiden's fighting ninjas. Jax and uh, Sonya fight, a, fight Cyrax. He fires a missile. And I have to say, Red, I love the, the classic Hollywood shot where there's the explosion behind you as you guys get launched into the air. You and Sonya's it's, explosion is one of the best f f flies from an explosion. I loved it. And I just love how they get into the fights. There's like, we have no time to explain any of this. Liu Kang goes, I don't understand. We closed the portal in the last movie. What closes can also open again. And I'm like, well, that's all the explanation you need. <laughs> he tries to make it sound all wizened and smart. Well, you know, you close the portal. Portal can open right back up. Point is, we got to fight these ninjas. We got to fight this bone monster. A uh, big bunch of fights at the end, which I think we'll touch on more. But just if you want nonstop flipping out crazy kung fu action from front to back, this movie is a heart pounding experience, and I and I love that about it. So you're you're picking the fights, okay? Well, uh, I'm I'm gonna pick. You're sort of implying it, but since you just said you took the fights, I'm going with the. Who cares about exposition is really what I want to focus on solely because this movie goes, st the Mortal Kombat song plays during the New Line logo. That's how serious <laughs> this movie is yeah. about not caring about any of the plot. I won't mention the fights, but it's just, they don't care about plot in this movie because they know who cares about the fight. You just want to play the video game like you do with the punching. And this movie introduces all these characters, all the ones you didn't get last time. They're like, who cares why they're here? We're not going to justify why they're here. It doesn't matter if any of the past actors are here. If they they didn't want to come back. We just recast them. You didn't even notice. Red was in the movie. He didn't even notice. Uh, and then they're like, F it. We're going to bring everybody. We're going to recast everybody. We're going to go make them do these, these battles. Who cares about the plot? It's Mortal Kombat. You want to pump some quarters in this movie. So when, who cares about the plots? The rules say the earth is safe for another generation. Obviously, Khan has cheated and broken the rule. We don't want the plot. We want the fights. Uh, I'm focusing instead of the play on the on the fights. The fact that I appreciated the movie and its very tight runtime. Decided, you know what? We're not going to bog you down with world building and all the other nonsense that you might need to do. There's some explanation and things if you know the game and it's there. But for somebody else who's just like, I don't know what this Mortal Kombat nonsense is. It doesn't. They get to the the stuff that matters. They get to the meat of the movie quicker. So my point is. Screw exposition. The producers and writers are like, we don't care about explaining anything. <laughs> we don't care about it. Let's get to the action. Is that separate enough from what you said? I think it's close, but I'm, I'm willing to say there's a split down the middle. All right, because I'm I, I, I would have gone with the so fights, many but you fights, picked the fights. You're on the side of not wasting our yeah, time exactly. getting to the action. Okay, good. Fair now, enough. Good. All right, fair. Ba back to you on your number uh, three. All right, my number three. Now, I already talked about bringing all the characters into the movie, but I really want to talk about another aspect of that, and that's seeing all of their authentic moves from the video game. We get these characters, but they're not just doing standard kung fu action. They actually looked at the video game, looked at their special moves, and brought them into the movie. Uh, at the beginning, we see Johnny does his flying kick. He's even got the trail behind him. Uh, you've got smoke, or uh, was it smoke or Cyrax? Somebody's firing a missile. One of the robots. Uh, not, yeah, I believe it was Cyrax fired a missile. A you don't even know. Missiles. You're so into it. You don't even know. Go ahead, Vito. Well, that's the thing. I'm just excited to see them all there on the screen. Sub Zero with his classic ice powers. Even Scorpion, like little things where, when he uh, kidnaps, what's her name? He kidnaps Katana, right? To do it, he does his little 
his little ground teleport and appears behind her and grabs her just like in the video game. It's fantastic. And Jax, I got to say, at one point, you do the, the ground wave, you know, blow up the ground beneath you. Uh, and <laughs> one big one, let's not forget, they do work in the animalities. Fantastic stuff. They've got to uh, contact their inner animal. Now, I won't spoil where that goes because that might be another one of mine or it might be another one of Andy's. But they really looked at the game. They looked at the moves that the characters use, and they found ways to incorporate them into the movie, not only in fight sequences, but in the plot as well. I thought they did a great job of, again, staying true to the video game. This is maybe one of the truest uh, renditions of seeing a video game on the big screen. And again, a big love letter to the Mortal Kombat fan. Well said. It is. There's a lot of moves. Lot, the, I, the animalities I had in my character thing that you took. Uh, that's true. Bringing the animalities. I was waiting for the babalities, you know? Where they I was in, waiting for the babalities. <laughs> but I don't think that would work. Where they turned into babies, but they didn't Brad, go that way. I don't know way. if you know about those special moves, but in Mortal Kombat, you can turn your opponent into a baby, and then you win the match. <laughs> No, I don't know anything about no, that. No, that didn't come up on set. There was no scene where, <laughs> no, sir. Jax, no, you're going to turn him into a baby. <laughs> it is, that is a real <laughs> was, thing. Was that available back then in 97? <laughs> on the arcade game. It was in the game, video yeah, game. The they right might not combo, have the special effects it turned, budget. It turned him into a back baby. Back in the 90s? Yeah, yes. if you press the right button, they turned into a crying baby, and you won the match. It was very right. strange. Yeah. yeah, Mortal Kombat had a lot of fun back then. Uh, I don't think they they do that anymore. I don't no, think the new no. ones have the. No, now allergies. they get like Rambo and Terminator to show up. Robocop. Yeah, they just get famous people. Uh, all right, good one, Vito. All right, I got one. Uh, so this caring where you just sort of started, but you didn't say it. I got to go overall sets and locations that this film did. They filmed mm. on location in Thailand. Uh, they were out in uh, Jordan and Wales, from what it seems like. Hopefully, Red can confirm. Uh, but they would build. They filmed in these amazing locations around the world, and then they also built some amazing sets. That dungeon scene with um, uh, was amazing. Uh, and and let's not forget that finale. As you were talking about, I, I was you sort of already got what I was going to say, which was you've taken a couple of mine. Uh, the fact that uh, it's very Sorry. similar. It's take it's similar to the game but i love that fact because the finale of the movie is just like the the, yeah, the the game it's literally like a castle that you're sort of you know competing up to get the villains yeah and that final scene all you see all the villains up there on that mountaintop like you're like you're facing them like you're gonna pop quarters in there uh you're, yeah. like, you're gonna get each one uh, i really appreciated the sets the locations for for a movie that f seems like it was cheap uh, they did a very good job of really stepping up the location budget, the loca the places, uh, and, and actually traveling to do those locations. I wanted uh, to well know if that sets. Temple of the Gods was real, that one in the, the valley or whatever. I tried looking it up. You know that big yes, temple yes. before they get... That's a real when, place? The, the one that he blew up? Yeah. Yeah, that he blew... Yes, Shao Kahn yes, blows that, it up? That, yes, yes, yes. That was in Petra, Wow, where is that? Jordan. Petra, Jordan. Jordan, see? So you were traveling around, right, Red? Absolutely. It was a wonderful experience. Um, no, when we exciting. were in Thailand filming, we had to actually go to the council, the government council, and they had a meeting because they thought that we were desecrating some of their temples. So <laughs> Gee, they no, took a of couple of not. the <laughs> actors and, a, and the producers to talk to the government to let them know that that's not, in fact, what was happening. We were telling a story about faith. And so we had to go to the holiest places on earth. And so we recognized this as being yeah. one of those places. Wow. Do you think they're upset that you then blew up one of the holiest <laughs> places on earth? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Maybe they don't Probably. like that as much. Anything you guys left that in. out of the discussion. Exactly. Like, yes, and then what happens yes. at the table? Absolutely. We all pray Absolutely. and leave quietly. Yeah, absolutely yeah uh <laughs> you know they blew the horn and when we were in petra jordan at the temples they blew the horn three or four times a day you know to pray so yeah. it gave us an opportunity to pray every time they prayed so it was it was pretty oh, nice wow, wow. cool an and they were bed when we got to kick it with the bedouin which are a traveling group of nomads and they really liked me by the time we left i i, I enjoyed myself tremendously well, they so oh, wow. only adding the fact. Look, they got to, they actually sent this cast around to around yes, the world, they did. build these yes, sets. They did. I gotta say yeah. that's a huge positive in my book. So I'm gonna take Absolutely. that as number four. All right. Did you guys get to visit the uh, subterranean tunnels where the ball uh, travels to any part of the globe? <laughs> Uh, no, uh, goes no. through the center of the earth. They didn't send you to those. That was a, no, no, oh, no. Darn. If, if they did, we were asleep. We didn't get to see it. <laughs> I don't think I wanted to go. I always wanted to visit that. <laughs> so that scene is me, so crazy. Me too. <laughs> me too.
Well, I guess on that, I guess I can go into my next yeah, one. Number four. Uh, I don't know if this is too broad, but the incredible special effects <laughs> in this movie. Look, I've said this before. I think I said it in my thing about Battlefield Earth. You have to love and respect what these CG artists were doing with the technology at the time. Someone comes to them and says, we want to have a ball that travels through a lava pit in the center of the earth. Find a way to make it work. And they found a way. Again, oh, Jack's fighting the bone demon monster. I, yeah, now it looks ridiculous, but I'm sure back then you were like, my God, what is that horrible thing? You watch it and beat the crap out of it. And again, I keep getting back to you. I keep beating around this, but I have to say the animality battle at the end, Hydra versus Dragon. Both Shao Kahn and Liu Kang transform into their ultimate animal forms and have a knockdown, drag out epic battle for the ages. I don't know if you'll ever see a, a fight of this caliber again. You are, you are horrified as this computer generated dragon and this giant Hydra monster just go at it. Uh, the thrill of seeing that on the screen, I, I think how could you not come away from that movie loving all of these wonderful effects, wonderful monsters, wonderful CG technology. I mean, this was the cutting edge for the time and, and it, I think it still holds up today. Well, all right. Well, well, well said. All right. Uh, I figured you were going to say that since you were talking so highly about Battlefield Earth's effects. Uh, I figured you would love the effects in this movie. I don't know if I agree. Uh, they were, um, if you're being honest. Tell me you don't love that dragon. Come on. How on often do you get to watch a guy turn into a dragon in a movie? <laughs> not enough. Oh, no, I don't see everything. There's not enough movies with that. It's time for our final points, and then Red will decide who is the ultimate victor here. And uh, I got to be honest, Vito, you did a good job today because you took a few of mine. You did finally get a few of mine, so I hope yeah, you feel good. Yeah, I could see and the I, disappointment on your face. I, every I had time. to move around my list, so that's part of this game is you got to move around. So I'm going to go with a silly one. I'm going to seeming, but I think it's an I think it's a good one. I'll take that back. It's not a silly one. This is an important one. So this is, listen, this was a PG-13 kids movie. To this is a teenagers movie. These kids were in the arcades playing this game. A lot of times they're getting in trouble because of all the blood. So this movie had to do that. They had to do a PG-13 version of this bloody movie. So they figured out how to do the PG-13 for these kids. But then on top of that, the producers clearly wanted to tax them more on. So they sort of made it feel like an adult movie at times without the sex. It was kind of this brilliant combo of not going too gory, but still walking that weird line. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about that weird scene where your love can break the hold Khan has over your mother. Only our love can bring us back together in that weird, longingly <laughs> awkward touch. Uh, yeah. and, then, and then there was that moment where Jade shows up in her underwear, and you're just like, what's going on in the middle of the snow? Why? Why are you here? Uh, and then yeah. we had that mud fight with Sonya. I mean, this, I was waiting if you were going to bring up the, the mud, mud fight. fight with, I mean, this literally Come was on. like a movie that walked that line for hormonal thirteen-year-olds without giving them too much. It never gets too out of hand. It sort of just walks that fine line to keep those thirteen-year-old teenagers because they know they're not going to get the blood. But oh, whoa, we're going to get like maybe no, it's going to turn fight. into an adult movie, but it never does. It's like the beginning of it, but it doesn't. So between the mud, all that sort of brilliant juggling of a mature Sure, movie. They managed to walk that line beautifully. I thought, just making it just uh, adult enough. A at little times bit racy. That I gotta say, it's a it's a good PG thirteen movie for, for the perfect movie for thirteen year olds who are right trying to get that craziness <laughs> and they're just <laughs> trying just, to figure out their changing exactly. bodies. So it's it's giving yeah. them a little bit of that without going too far, which I appreciated. It, it never really I felt like went over the line, but it definitely had some awkward moments uh but there we go for my final point and then Vito, i think red had a, a great line too where uh, he looks at sonia and i think he says but you do look good in my Jax. well you do i was like yeah that's a good line that's a good one <laughs> that mud fight i think was that's sick. what it was i hope i the got mud it right fight. sonia right. gets thrown down so many times in that mud fight it's it's she took some hits. You all did, but that was the, just again. Show, I have never seen a good mud fight like that done so well uh, with the action. So bravo! That is a massive yeah. positive. <laughs> you did kind of steal one of my backups. I did have on here the classic TNA. There's some. Uh, they they cut out some of the uniforms. You see a little bit of something, but again, they keep but again, it again. Like, that was my point. They, they walk the tasteful. line for PG thirteen yeah. very carefully, expertly. All right, good. I got a good last one. Vito, your all turn. Right. Here's a final here's point. My, my number five, 
Maybe this sounds comical, but to me, I loved every part of this. All the flips. <laughs> Everybody in this movie is flipping constantly, and it's awesome. They flip even when there's no reason to flip. At the beginning of the movie, Raiden and Shao Kahn are looking at each other. Raiden does a flip in the air. There's like 10 shots of him just doing this cool flip. Then Shao Kahn does a flip. There's like 10 angles of that. And they just land in front of each other and have a conversation. They're not even ready to fight, and they're already flipping. Shao Kahn's got to get off the throne. Does he gingerly raise himself up from the throne? And No, he flips off the throne. Everybody in the background, ninjas are flipping around. At one point, Raiden's fighting a ninja, and they're just doing flips in front of each other. Look. The the athleticism on display here, I don't know how many people were doing their own stunts, how many stunt... I was trying to go through the list of uh, stunt doubles, and it's a mile long, because there is so much ninja flipping action. Everybody's bodies are just spinning in the air at all times. I, I don't know. There's some. It's dynamic. It's exciting to watch. There's never a dull... You can't even just walk normally in this movie. Everybody's moving and flipping and jiving. It's got an energy to it that I loved. I love watching all the flips, and, and it was just incredible to see, again, that athletic prowess on the screen. All right, bravo. All right, well, there we have our five points. Yes, it is. We now go to our judge, Red. Uh, thank you so much for being here. It's an honor. No matter who wins, Vito, I think we're all winners here today on this episode. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the presence of the Divine Jack. This is amazing. How could I not be a winner today? Um, it was a great match. I love each and every one of your arguments. You guys need to put this on Rotten Tomatoes so that people can see the good parts that you guys saw. I we're going to bring up the was... we're single handedly bringing up the we Rotten are. Tomatoes audience score. Enough for really that. that. That is good. So now let me tell you this: I have a winner by one half a point. I was giving points right. um, for every round. Ooh, all right. Wow. He took in the seriously. first round. Him, yeah. In the first round, Andy got two points um he also got two points for the fourth round so what was the fourth round fourth round was the locations yeah okay so he Andy. got two points for locations and two because, points because because he i likes went you. all the way around the round around the yeah. world over and over again with that movie so locations did well uh, of course he got two because it was me and yeah you know, yeah oh he, i wonder know, how he managed to eke those out he, bringing he on a special it, guest but you gotta you gotta you gotta give him points for that extra work that he put in for that one thank you okay. although thank i you. just gave you two and a half points for your last point argument uh veto that was two and a half two points. and a half that points was, for flips that, that was yes yes because that was correct they flipped and flipped and flipped and flipped the and whole movie he, i did a flip you know yeah. we flipped and flipped and flipped and you know i almost got into a fight at that last flip because i told one of the guys not to touch me and i did a flip and he scratched my back and i asked him why did you touch me? I told you not to touch me. And he said, because I didn't want you to fall. I said, I've been doing this flip all movie. And now all of a sudden you want to touch me and scratch me. So I thought it was done on purpose. You're like, this is the but hundredth the fact flip that you I've done. That, up, that was very yeah. good. You <laughs> lost by half a point, Vito. And oh! the half, listen, listen, listen. And yeah. the half a point that you lost by, you know where it was? What? The special effects. Oh, come ah, on. He didn't play, yeah. No, you, could, you, could, you could spin it all you want, but that I gotta say, <laughs> yes. man, you know, I know I was in the movie, but the special effects when I saw the finished product, I was like, oh my goodness, no. you know, dragon fight, I couldn't understand, <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't understand. Um, I did like my my ground punch. I thought that that was okay. That looked good. That looked yeah, good. There's another special effects scene where Shao Kahn knocked one of the guys into a pit. He said, you will never make that mistake. He said, I'll never do it again. He said, no, you won't. And he hit him to knock him into the fire pit. But if you cut, you will see it's another character that actually falls in the pit. Oh, so really? I'm one of those sticklers when I watch movies. Quentin Tarantino, yeah. he's a buddy of mine. And, and, and I, I like to point out mistakes that I find in the movie. So yeah. you lost by half a point with that oh. argument right there. I could only give you, I started to give you a zero, but I gave <laughs> you a half sold a it. point. But then I sold I it. You, that's right. That's right. All you right. got a half a point for selling I'll it. Take the half. That's I'll where, take the half that's a point. where you lost to me. You picked the special effects and, and the special effects were not very good in my opinion. Hallelujah. I love the movie. I was in it. You know, we <laughs> had no some one things that we, we had to do. 
Um, but what about that great explosion that you survived? Now that was a good special effect. Yeah, yes, it really was. And I yeah. hurt my back on that one, you know, Oh, geez, I, I they punished you a, in this movie. Yeah. But you know, you asked how many stunts did we do ourselves? There was a scene where Cyrex now at the beginning of the Cyrex movie, that was my first fight. And Sonya yeah. Vaughn had just, uh, got me free. And so I was supposed to be clumsy with the arms so that yeah, you're figuring out how they were getting used to the arms. Right. Okay? okay. And there was a scene where they said, okay, we're going to do a flip and we're going to flip you onto the table and then you could roll on the ground and we'd like to do it in one cut. So is it okay if, if you do it? I said, no, that's what stunt men are for. So I used the stunt yeah. man. <laughs> Good. You know, so that, yeah, I mean, right. so some of the stunt stunts man. in this movie, I mean, must be punishing. Everybody is doing everything at all times. Well, yes, you just watch the ninjas in the background. They're so animated, constantly yes, yeah. doing Jumping. everything. We saw a guy. We saw a guy that did a flip on one stair and landed on the same stair. Now, Ooh. if you don't know special effects, if you don't know flipping or gymnastics, you wouldn't yeah. be able to appreciate what I just said to you. Um, I'm a six degree black belt. I do some incredible things. But that guy <laughs> jumped in the air, did a flip and landed on the same stair. That's, yeah, that's I, I don't think I could do that. Andy might. I don't think I could do that either. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I did wipe out, but I'm not doing that. that yeah. So... Well, Again, the athleticism I, in this movie is incredible. There's so much more to talk about with Red here, and that's why I want to. We're going to pause this and, and wrap up our episode here because I want to still talk to Red and get some insight from this film if he's willing to, to share. Uh, do we? Can we have a couple more minutes with you, Red, to talk about your feelings yes, of the movie? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Vito, yes, sir. stick around with me. Let's have this conversation. But well, the ultimate point total: Do I lose ultimate, by half the points that I have? Five, yeah. five and a half to six. Five yes! and a half. Five, yes! five and Come a half on. I put in the work. Yes. Five I and thought and the dragon. The I, dragon I, is I, worth a full <laughs> point. Come on. <laughs> no, I think the dragon lost it. I yeah. think no! the dragon lost yeah. it. Nobody bought that veto, and I'm so and glad. No, everybody at home who's watching this, don't forget. <laughs> I think this- we could have had a higher Rotten Tomato <laughs> score if we had not had the dragon. I'm going to say this for the people watching at home. Make up your own mind because we will have the audience oh, poll as audience. well. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Just because Jax doesn't like the dragon, okay? Oh, you I'm see it right now. He doesn't even you know in your heart. That's accepting a good the judge's verdict. I'm a, I, not only am I glad that you lost now that you just did that. Hey, do you remember but in that movie? In, in that movie, in that part when the dragon they started fighting. I remember yeah. I said, what, what is going on? I said something <laughs> to that effect, like, oh my goodness, I didn't see it all. You know, so and that was before I even saw the finished product of the dragons. Oh, I well, want I, I I to wanna hear with you. I want to hear I what th- your reaction no. was when you watched the finished product. So I'm going to but hold on. All right. Uh, I'm so glad you lost Vito just because of the, the disrespected red just there. And also, if you're going to lose, I'm so grateful that you lost on a, a question about effects, just proving <laughs> that you don't know what you're talking about with special effects. You can't keep playing that game on this show. The anymore. audience is going <laughs> to agree with me when they see that dragon. Uh, but All I got to think, I got to thank Mr. You, Williams. You Hollywood snobs <laughs> don't appreciate a good CG dragon. That's all I'm going to say. You'll well, see. I got to thank Mr. Williams on this installment. We're not done. If you didn't watch our episode, we're going to continue this conversation over on Popcorn Planet with a more in-depth conversation with Mr. Williams talking about his experience on this film, as well as, Vito, I don't know if you know, but he's Saber on American Gladiators as well. Uh, oh, so this is a, a I love football play- we, a legend we have with us, so I want to break down and have some talks with him. Uh, so in the meanwhile, stay tuned for more episodes of Best Movie Ever. If you guys want to pitch a movie, tell us down in the comments below. I guess I'll put a straw poll for the viewer vote just for, for Vito ego we'll see if you agree with mr williams you're gonna respect ego. you're gonna respect red's uh, verdict for me doing the work or you're gonna give it to Vito because he wants the win uh tell us down in the comment below make sure you hit that subscribe button here in a movie world for more episodes uh red what an honor thank you so much for being here that was the longest week of my life all right everybody thank you guys so much for tuning in for best best movie, movie ever. ever and it is glorious Never give up hope.